This is Dr. Jet's Formula One outboard tunnel haul. It's a micro, 13 inches long. Calls it the tunnel jet. I have it mocked up on this building board. I have made several modifications, working things out for myself, partly figuring out how to set up this outboard motor. Also partly setting up for my servo mount and my motor mount. And I've yet to glue one piece of wood together. The first thing to work out and the number one concern is the mounting of this fake outboard motor. I'm just going to call it an outboard motor from here on out. It's actually a strutter it's a strut and a rudder the motor is going to mount up here flex cable come down the bottom through the strutter but for this conversation i'm just going to call this the outboard motor the question is for performance wise how high do you mount this outboard motor. When I work that out, did that with this building board, then that took care of simultaneously the transom and the mountain of the servo. I had to figure out how I was going to do this, mounting the servo and the transom in order to mount the outboard motor. I've made it adjustable in height. I have a quarter inch height adjustment. So that's done with slots in the transom. I have this nut plate in the front here. Four screws mounting directly to the transom. So the question is, where do you mount the outboard motor? And I believe the answer has to lie in what surface are you going to set everything to? If you look at the this um, stringer here, which is the bottom of the um, sponsons, there is not a flat section here. From the back, it starts tapering up. So... The flat surface, therefore, to me, becomes the center plate here, the bottom of the tunnel. That's going to be the surface that I'm going to work off of for the height of the outboard motor. These F1 tunnel halls tend to ride with a nose-up attitude at speed, and that attitude is not an angle that we can predict and set the prop shaft center line to. If we look at the center line of the prop shaft and we change this ride attitude, that raises or lowers the center line of the prop shaft with that setback to the outboard motor. So we can't predict that ride angle, but using the bottom of the tunnel as a surface to set up on our board, we can make a height setting and then go out and test run it, come back and make changes to a known setting, incremental changes to known setting, and go back out and run it and see how that affects the handling of the hall. So I've marked on my setup board two marks here and here. And that was the measurement from the top of the board or the bottom of the tunnel down to the bottom of the stringers in the very back. Then I've made a line beneath that 16th of an inch to allow for the balsa sheeting that's going to be on the bottom of the sponsons. So this line represents the bottom of my sponsons in the back. Then I have another line a quarter inch up and those are 
the range of settings that I'm interested in as far as setting the height of the outboard motor. With that established, then I was able to locate where to put my slot in the transom to raise or lower the outboard motor. So here it is with the bottom of the um, hub level with the bottom of the sponsons after the sheeting's on. And I can lower it to where my prop shaft, center line of my prop shaft, is level with the bottom of my sponsons in the back to going up to a quarter inch high. Center line of the prop shaft, a quarter inch above the bottom of the sponsons with the sheeting on. And that's the reason for this extensive mock-up and why I have not glued one piece of wood. I had to figure this all out and I don't like guessing. But this let me work out the location of the slots to raise and lower the motor. The location of the slots for the cables, the pull-pull cables. Got my servo mount worked out. And even with the servo set upright, the angle going to the um, mounts on these arms on the motor, moving it up and down that much does not change the tension on the pull-pull cables. That's all the way up. It's all the way down. So no issues there. I've also drilled new holes in the arms on this motor. I made this spacing the same distance as the length of the servo arm and then just moved it back accordingly to get that spacing. And I'll cut these off later. Always works better. Pull pull system. You can have that the same. You won't get slack in your cables at the ends of the travel. Now let's talk about where I came up with the height settings on this outboard motor and the overall tuning of an outboard tunnel haul. I'm referring to the Zipkits G30 outboard tunnel haul manual and specifically I want to look at the setup tips. You can pause this screen and read it if you'd like, and then we'll talk about it. I followed these setup tips when I maidened and tuned my G30, and I don't see any reason why these setup tips wouldn't also apply to this little 13 inch micro outboard tunnel hall. Without going through this word for word, let's talk about the information we can glean from this to help with the tuning of this micro tunnel hall. I can tell you from experience maidening and tuning my G30, I ended up with a really sweet running boat. The first setting here is the center gravity. And to me, this looks like a set it and forget it type of setting. They're saying set it nine inches forward from the back of the sponson. If you do the math on a 30 inch haul, that would be right around the 30% mark. The next setting is the prop shaft center line height. So to start off, they're saying set it an eighth inch above. They also talk about changing the prop shaft angle if the nodes ride too low. I want to table that for now. And so we will come up with an initial setting of the height of the prop shaft for the maiden run. The next thing to look at is the depth adjustment. So they're saying that controls the height of the whole boat in the water. And another way to think about it is imagine if this was fixed in a vise and you change that depth adjustment. So if you lower the height of the prop shaft center line, you're gonna raise the entire boat out of the water. It'll run looser. And the reason they say the prop wants to ride at the 
surface level. A surface prop wants to come up and ride on the surface. And so it will climb to surface, level out, taking the whole boat with it. And here's why I was tabling the center of gravity. They're saying balance is not critical, but it will influence turns and when the boat blows off the water. So if it's too far back, it'll blow off, move it forward, and it'll turn better. It'll be running wetter. Too far forward also, like they're saying here, it will become unpredictable. You'll get too much bite and you'll get oversteer in the corner. So the key, as they're saying here, is the combination, angle, depth, and balance point. And then if you look here, this is the most key piece of information to me. They give their current setup where they landed on tuning the G30. So they're running it with no angle, positive or negative angle to the prop shaft. And the center line is a quarter inch above the sponsons and the CG like where they initially set it. At no point in this setup recommendations did they run the prop shaft depth below the bottom of the sponsons. And I think the same thing would apply to this um, tunnel jet. And so with all that said, that is why I've landed here. I have adjustment to run the prop shaft center line level with the bottom of the sponsons and I can go up to a quarter inch above. So running level to me would be as loose as you'd want to run this boat. I think this information will certainly apply. I don't know that I'll need as much as a quarter inch above the bottom of the sponsons as far as um, a wet setting, but I think this would be a good place to start. Probably go with, like they recommended, about in the middle as far as the prop shaft cern line for the maiden run. I do have enough adjustment where I could go below, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch below if I need it, but I don't think I'll need it. So I'm running my servo upright, and this tray that's going to be glued into the hull, I have it cut out for a mini servo. And on top of that, I have this adapter plate for mounting this micro servo. It's a KST servo, and these are very awesome and very expensive. This is like a $40 servo, but this works out to be about 21 inch ounces of torque at six volts. So I doubt it will fail, but if it does, I could simply pull this plate and I could go to a um, mini servo if I need to. I've made two other changes to this kit up here and not complaining. I understand this is a prototype kit Dr. Jet sent me. I made this notch deeper, change it so this front plate sits flush with the side plate and I've modified the motor mount. I could not find the motor and the mount that this was designed for. So I've made a solid bottom plate coming off that 90 degrees and notched into the sides here. I have this plate with nuts on the back that will be bonded in. And then this plate is removable. Here it is with this plate removed. So I'll have to drill this plate to mount the motor. You can see it's laid out where it fits inside where these screws go. So I have to drill the holes to mount that, drill relief holes back here for the heads of the bolts that will be coming in the back side of this plate. And then this drops into this notch formed by that strip down there and then be screwed in. 
So a universal motor mount. I could make whatever plate I need for the motor I'm putting in there. So there it is. All mocked up. Pinned down. The center plate's pinned down on my build board, setup board. Everything's dry fit. I have these shims here pinned to the board to hold these straight when I start putting foam in here and gluing on the sheeting. So I did not use the motor mount. I didn't use this servo mount from the kit and I didn't use this transom. Made new for all the reasons that I've shared. So I am now ready to take this apart and start gluing the wood kit together. More to come.